In the summer of 2007, 10 people gave samples of their blood, saliva, skin cells, disease and lifestyle information. They also agreed to have their genomes sequenced and posted on the internet for all the world to see. Cardiac uh, hypertrophy, mm -hmm. uh, is that the condition that often kills athletes in their prime? Yes, you, you yes, see? yes, yeah. yes. So I have the rare version. You do presumably have the rare version. How our lives will unfold in public will foreshadow how the public views learning their own genomic information. People are saying that the future of the genome is 20 years from now. I say it's happening now. I'm George Church, professor at Harvard Medical School in Genetics. In the mid-80s, a few of us thought that the time had come due to technological advances to sequence a human genome. We expected this would cost about $3 billion, and that's what it did. But some of us felt very uncomfortable with that price tag and felt that there was a way that we could bring the cost down so it would be affordable for everybody, in the sort of the $1,000 per person range. So in the near future, you will use your genome to make decisions about what drugs, what nutritions, what surgeries you elect to take and when, what diagnostics you take. It's lovely. Yeah. I think we may look back on today as being the pre-genetic age where we can't believe that people didn't know the parts that made up their body and what made them special and, and at a deep level. It would be kind of like trying to uh, work on your car without ever having the mechanic ever having seen any of the parts before. For the Personal Genome Project, what we're trying to do is figure out to what extent genes combined with environment impact almost every aspect of your body, things like hair color, eye color, medical traits, and behavior. We're not only working on the technology, we're also trying to recruit human subjects and people need to understand that it's much more identifying than any medical research has ever been. So the DNA will be informing about the deep medical issues that might cause people to discriminate against you in getting employment or losing your employment, getting insurance or the rates of the insurance, this kind of discrimination based on your genetics. That you can't remove and make anonymous their facial information or their DNA fingerprints, which are used in crime analysis, as everybody that's watched CSI knows. And the Personal Genome Project is the broadest, most invasive study probably ever in medical genetics. I'm Volunteer One, at the request of the Harvard Institutional Review Board who wanted me to get a dose of my own medicine and make sure that I would experience the full experience and see w and maybe actively and rapidly respond to the, the threats and, uh, and needs of the subjects. Okay, there she is. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. My wife, Ting Wu, is a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School and she felt that we had to start looking more carefully at some of the ethical, legal, social aspects. And she got interested and, and her staff is involved in this in a, from a different angle. Just to remind you of why I'm here, I'm writing a book about personal genomics and I'm interested in your view of all of this, both as a scientist and as George's wife. Now I understand that you've over the last couple of years have been sort of ambivalent about the PGP at various times. I think that George and I are very much aligned in the ultimate benefit of the PGP project. I think that that information, if used properly, can really help a lot of people. Getting there, uh, there's a technology side, mm -hmm. and then there's the social side and all the ramifications of that. And that's the side that's very hard to predict. And meshing that with what I know people can do to each other when it's good and what they can do to each other when it's not good, that's where my ambivalence yeah. comes from. My family is less open um, 
but they certainly, uh, we've had discussion and they uh, approve or go along with uh, the level of openness that I, that I have. Your full name is Bunder Marie Wu? No. no. My full name is Bunder Marie Dailian Wu, and there's also a pixel in there somewhere. Really? Yes. So tell me about that. I'm a nerd child. I was born into a nerd family. They uh, do these things. I see. You already have a list of phenotypes? You want? I'm always eavesdropping whenever they're talking about these things. And she has mentioned, and they both have fears about the way it could impact the world, as do I. And it is my generation, but I think that things work out for my dad. Mm -hmm. Things work out for him. I trust my dad. I think the thing we worry about the most is that we're not worrying about the right things. Hey, uh, how you doing? George. Yeah. Hey, Joe. John. Good to see how you? Are you? Yeah. So tomorrow we're going to have most of the ten participants coming in and meeting with, with each other for the first time. Hello. I have to say thank you big time because this is really asking <laughs> more than probably anybody has asked before, except maybe the military. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you all for, for participating. We know it has a lot of rough edges right at the moment, but, but that the point is to get it out there in the broad daylight so that people can see how genetics is actually done and all the mistakes that you make along the way. If we're going to scale up to 100,000, which we hope to start doing this fall, um, we better know what we're doing.